It's time now for Perspective, and we're taking to the waves today ahead of the Transat Jacques Vabre Normandie Le Havre. It's a major international sailing competition that will see some 60 teams of two leaving the famous seaside resort of Le Havre here in mainland France and making for Fort de France in the French Caribbean on the island of Martinique. Kicking off on the 29th of October, it's set to be an extraordinary spectacle. And I'm lucky enough today to be joined on set by skipper pair Johan Richom and Jan Elias. Thank you so much uh, to both of you for joining us on set today at France 24. Now, the race begins in a little over three weeks. What are those three weeks going to look like for you? Um, well, the main aim is to get the boat ready. Uh, we've been sailing it for eight or nine months now. It's a brand new boat. Uh, so we have to get it technically ready and uh, making sure it doesn't break on the way down. And uh, then uh, for us to train a little bit, and uh, the last part would be delivering it from where we are in Lorient, southern Brittany, all the way to Le Havre in Normandy for the start of the race. And is that a, uh, a tricky undertaking, the delivering it to the start of the race, or is that just par for the course for you guys now? You never know which part is going to be the trickiest. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's quite easy because we know the waters quite well. We sail around, you know, for the past 10 or 20 years uh, in this area of the of the channel. And uh, but it's always tricky because you got lots of rocks, lots of uh, tidal currents, fishing boats, shipping. You always got to be on the lookout, except especially for our boats, which go you know between 20 and 30 knots. So every obstacle comes up fast. So you got to be careful all the time. And can you tell us just a bit about this race for people who aren't familiar with this race? What does it consist of? How long does it take? What's the route? Uh, it takes nearly three weeks for us uh, in an Imoca uh, boat. Uh, we go to the um, equator. Uh, we turn around an island uh, which is calling uh, San Pedro. And then after we uh, cross the Atlantic uh, to uh, Martinique. There is three different uh, courses. Uh, one for the class 40, one for the Imoca and one for the Ultimate. The idea is that all the boats arrive in the same five days in uh, Martinique. OK, and what are the biggest challenges going to be for your boat, for the two of you, um, as you're looking ahead to, uh, to the race? Um, well, as you can see, these boats uh, nearly fly, so uh, they're extremely fa fast, but as well fragile. You know, they're prototypes, so they're quite easy to break. And we're kind of pushing boundaries right now uh, with these boats uh, flying over the waves, so hitting the waves as well some of the times with some uh, major uh, slamming loads. So we got to make sure we preserve the boat to uh, you know, finish it. So that's one of the challenges. Uh, the other challenge is, of course, having a, a nice duo and uh, working well together. Um, so we've been sailing for six months together. So Not too long, actually. Six months doesn't strike me as a huge amount of time. Which is, well, it's one season in the sailing world, basically. Okay. So we, we launched at end of the end of the winter. Uh, we've had three different races, including the Rolex Fastnet in, um, in the UK. And uh, so it's been going well. We've been improving and learning a lot about this new boat. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's, a, it's a, a challenge all season long for us to improve, know the boat, find the, the kind of the user manual of it. And, uh, I hope it's delivered with the boat. Well, it isn't. <laughs> I'm, sad, I'm sad to tell you it isn't. A little bit, because we do a lot of... Uh, flight simulation now, kind of, uh, kind of the same as the planes, so we can sail the boat electronically on land, uh, you know, on the computer. And is However, that helpful? Does it, do you think it, it prepares you adequately for the real thing on the water? It does give you some indication of how to use it. So it was designed using this tool, so, you know, everything is linked together. So it was designed to be used in a certain way, which we can see on the computer, and then we kind of... Um, try and replicate it in the real world. But sometimes, you know, the, the, the settings aren't exactly the same. You can't exactly do what the computer says, and uh, which is fun. It's an interesting part because it's, these boats are engineering marvels, you know. Uh, it's, uh, everything is fully carbon. It's very high tech. Lots of uh, optical fibers to uh, uh, measure the loads and uh, check that the structure is uh, still sound. And very, you know, very interesting if you've got an engineering background. Which you do. Well, I do, yeah. I've never really put it into practice because I went sailing straight after school, but I've, I did study uh, naval engineering in uh, Southampton. I'm intrigued to know you're going to be at sea together for, well, 20 days, 19, 20 days, depending on how well things go. One day less than the others. One day less than the others. That's the, that's the main goal. <laughs> what is it like sharing such close quarters? These are they're 
engineering, engineering marvels, but they are small for two people for close on three weeks. What's it like sharing <laughs> such close quarters with each other? Well, we are both on board, but uh, we are uh, have some uh, a system of watch. We change uh, each two or three hours, so we we share a lot, but we cross uh, each uh, watch. So it's like we are selling uh, alone uh, during the days, and uh, some, when we we cross to the the watch, we we shared uh, about the weather forecast and uh, what's the condition we have. And what's it like maintaining that state of, I imagine, hyper-vigilance for so many days on end? Well, it, it is tiring, for sure. I mean, uh, you've got the intensity, intensity of the race. Um, it's, uh, the preparation is long, the race is long. And so, you, you, you know, I mean, when you finish the race, obviously, you're pretty knackered. And uh, it, it, the thing is, you only sleep by one or two hours at a time. As, as Jan was saying, we, 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 we rotate all the time. But the thing is, we're used to sailing solo because a lot of the French sailing scene is single-handed sailing. So we both know how to manage this boat by ourselves, but it's uh, some, every two years, basically, we have some double-handed racing. And uh, so we, we do it together, but it's kind of what uh, was saying Yen is that it's just two solo sailors just crossing path every two or three hours. Waving on deck when yeah. they can. And yeah, just saying, oh, this is the trim, this is the boat, how I set it up. Uh, I like this, I like that, look out for this, look out for that. Bye-bye, I'm going to sleep. And what about things like eating, showering? How do you manage that, the practicalities of, of living on a boat for, for so many days? Well, we, we don't have fresh food on board because uh, we don't have uh, anything to, uh, to keep uh, the fresh food uh, on board. Uh, we have some dry food, we have some... Uh, um, food uh, that you can keep on board during... Uh, 20 days. Uh, we have our own uh, bags with uh, the, the food for the days. So, but, but we can share some, st some stuff, uh, you know, uh, if we want uh, to discuss and to, uh, to hit uh, and play and have a good moment together. Any luxuries? Any uh, hip flasks of whiskey or some <laughs> no. chocolate biscuits in the back pocket? <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, yeah, the sport has turned a little bit professional since uh, the old days. And uh, no, no, it's rarely, uh, we, we, don't, we don't carry anything like that. Maybe chocolate is the wildest yeah. thing we have. Chocolate, yeah. <laughs> um, and a bit of coffee. Uh, of course. But yeah, no, no, no. It's, and, and on board, there's no showers, obviously. Uh, but you know, if you've got a, a rain squall and you brought some soap, obviously you can wash down a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's funny how clean you can be uh, when you're away from land. It's not that bad. And you've both done a huge amount of racing. You've both won <coughs> numerous races that I haven't got the time to, to list here. Do you still get excited about the prospect of, of launching out into the open sea? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's what we live for. We sail uh, probably more than 150 days a year, and uh, we love those events. Uh, they're a great challenge. We've done them many times. Yen has won this race three times already. And um, we always, you know, it's always a new competition. So uh, the, the game changes all the time. Every edition of the race is different and, uh, you know, yeah, and it's great to be on the sea. You know, we've got a, a huge amount of, uh, of luck to be able to do what we do and uh, live off, uh, you know, professional uh, offshore sailing. Well, it certainly looks absolutely thrilling. I wish you both uh, the best of luck. Um, thank you both so much for coming on to, to speak you. to me here on France 24 today. Yoen Richom and Yann Elias, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.